Wow. So welcome back to Citizen Arcane. Just to let you know, this is turning out to be the best silly season ever. We have so much going on with so many different leagues that each have their own potentials for us, the consumers of these minor league sports. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, really excited to bring this to you today because it's the end of August here should be just the beginning of all of the uh, moves and machinations that go into uh, all of the sports entertainment football that we enjoy in the spring and summertime. So I just wanted to start with a, a thank you again for all of those people who have clicked on our links. So just like all of these leagues and franchises are trying to find a way to communicate with their customers and to uh, know what their customers want, I really appreciate those of you that have clicked on our link. And because of uh, some input, we've started selling these hook and loop patches, which you'll see uh, throughout these videos. I do appreciate when people comment on our videos, although I can't always comply with the wishes of the uh, people that do. So let's just start off with uh, one, I think, move that uh, probably seems inconsequential to a lot of people, to most people who follow this sort of thing because they have yet to play a snap. A snap. I know that organizations like um, R Sports Central don't start to cover uh, any of these leagues until they actually begin play because so many of them never make it to that first snap. But the Arena League is intriguing to me for a lot of reasons. Uh, Eddie Brown being a part of its leadership and you know they, they have finally announced their final team. So there was the Lunkers in Springfield, Missouri, the Goats in Kansas City, Missouri, the Waterloo, Iowa, Iowa Woo, and now finally the Harbor Monsters are uh, done there in Duluth, Minnesota, and it all looks pretty good to me. You know, all I'm working from are the postings that I see on their Twitter feeds and stuff, and it's strange to me that these leagues that are so well-funded are not using uh, Twitter and Facebook more um, aggressively, I guess, to, to get the word out because, you know, I think you have to capture the imagination of the, the market that you're in, the sports fans in that market fairly early, but we will see how it goes. Uh, you know, that said, uh, I, I will, of course, post the Twitter feeds for, for these uh, groups, but I did get quite a bit of information from Arena Pro Talk, which I know it as just a Facebook page. So I don't know if, if anybody else is out there. If they, I'll, I'll look and see if they have a Twitter feed as well. But so far, some pretty good information and just some fun information. Again, this particular YouTube channel is not above, uh, you know, rumors and just general uh, projections uh, as to what might come. So if anybody's looking for hard, cold facts, uh, this may not be the place for you because, again, we're just in it for the fun. So that said, I just wanted to talk about, you know, the AIF, which has come back under John Morris, and a couple of teams that have recently been announced. The Harrisburg Stampede, which has a long history, which I think started with the AR AIF many years ago. They're coming back. The Amarillo Ven Venom, which have been dormant for a couple years, but they are coming back. They also started with the um they also started with the aif and then you know the the wheeling miners which used to be the greyhounds and i think all of those played in the same facility as the nailers of the echl which to me is a big deal because you know for me at least the most likely candidate for a a arena team is going to be in the team that houses my uh, echl gladiators and so I think a good hockey facility is kind of a prerequisite to make sure that you've got enough space, to make sure that there's enough there, there to have a team. And uh, it looks like that's gonna be the case with them. Now, you know, the moving on to the NAL, they have lost so many teams, but it looks like, um, you know, they're gaining the beef and the predators, maybe the tropics, hard to say, uh, that would be optimal. It looks like that's uh, maybe in the works. And then, you know, we're moving on to the IFL, which definitely picked up the Sharks from the National Arena League. And maybe we'll pick up the San Antonio Gunslingers as well, which would put them at 16, even if we don't finally get the return of the 
bucks in South Dakota or the uh, wild dogs, I think it is, in Ohio. So we will see how that goes. It does look like the AFL, which worries me a great deal, is going to pick up the Billings Montana Outlaws and rebrand uh, the West Texas Warbirds as the Desert Hawks. The only reason I say that it's a worry to me is because they, uh, you know, they made the big announcement with their their locations, and maybe they'll just have more than 16 teams. If they legitimately had 16 ownership groups, maybe they will also have more uh, teams and added to their business plan. But one of the problems for me with the old AFL is that their initial business plan just fell by the wayside as soon as they had any glimmer of uh, success. And so, you know, if you look at there's, I'll post a link to it, but there is a uh, test video for the old Arena Football League when it first got started in 1987, you know, on the heels of the success of the USFL and, and things like that. Uh, and I just, I wonder if uh, Lee Hutton the third is already straying from the original business plan, but we really don't know. I will say that they also are playing their cards close to the best. There have not been a great many formal announcements from the official Arena League, but uh, I think those are soon forthcoming. I'm thinking probably by the end of October. Let me know what you think. Again, this is just uh, some things that are going on in the world of minor league indoor and arena football. I do appreciate your time and have a great day.